So let's run through the building of an S69. The man that designed this engine was Mr. James Holden. He became locomotive superintendent at the Stratford Works for the GER in 1885. The decision to build this engine came about because my grandfather worked at Stratford Works and I thought it'd make a nice change to build an engine from around his era of 1921. For me this engine was going to be breaking new ground as it had inside cylinders and an inside crank. First were the cylinders which were bored out of a solid piece of brass bar Then the steam passages had to be drilled in place. The completed cylinder less the covers with all the passageways finished. The pistons were Hornby ones from the A3 class locomotive Flying Scotsman and fitted a treat. The valve assembly was made a little smaller to fit inside the frames. Connected to some compressed air you could rotate the valve and see the piston rods flying in and out. Now for the crank axle. This was going to be a fiddly little job. On the right you can see the uh, B12 axle and on the left the one I made. All the axles were fitted with ball races. One side of the frames with the bearings in place and gear assembly and cylinders. Both the frames and all the wheels, the only thing left to do are the drivers at the end need their bearings. The middle axle that took the valve timing to the valve chest was further away so a new shaft was needed. With so many of the major components now built and fitted, it was getting close to running it on compressed air to see if the wheels would turn. With the valve timing set and the compressed air added, the engine immediately burst into life on top of the kitchen table. One of the worries with this job was going to be the valve timing itself. Because the uh, synchronisation of the front driver and the middle driver had to be fairly good as all the timing was based around these two axles. I had designed new electronics for other engines that I'd built, so all I needed to do was tailor make the design to fit the new engine. Next was going to be the motor and gearbox servo unit, which needed to be made smaller because the present Hornby system, it would come out too far inside the cab. This new idea would make it a little more compact bringing the motor down between the last two driving axles. This way it would leave all the cab free for my little crew. Now as things were going well with the compressed air it was time to start some steam testing. I did this with a A3 tender as I hadn't actually built a tender for the engine yet. Front bogies weren't part of the kit, they came off a Hornby loco, I believe a castle. Sitting on the rolling road you can see the valve drive shaft revolving with the adjuster screws. Um, these, these are used to set the finer adjustment of the valve events.
just a few changes to the safety valve, its location and its fitting was um, another priority as there wasn't room for it in its original position. The servo motor was being driven by the Hornby Electronics as my system hadn't been built yet. The nickel frames have been extended with a piece of brass silver soldered to them to give some support for the cylinders. Later on I made new frames. And speaking about frames, the tender frames were remade from scratch as the A4 wheel centers are all different. Likewise the A4 tender boiler was the wrong size for this engine so a new boiler was manufactured. While all the mods were being carried out for the tender it was decided to fit a rear lamp. These engines did seem to have very small tenders but even so their economy was so good it didn't impair their efficiency. The number of jobs to build this engine were gradually getting crossed off the list. Next was the oiling. It was decided to have a valve fitted to the front of the oil tank and feed the oil in through a syringe this way. A new oil tank stroke regulator assembly was built and the door to the front of the smoke box was fixed on very small hinges. This would allow access to the smoke box and the oil tank and its filler valve as you can see in this picture. With all this outline work now being completed some more test runs on the rolling road to check the gear assembly and electric motor and the tender was to be carried out. You can see here the servo motor and gearbox assembly working. This was checking out the new electronics to prove all was working ok. By operating the controller one click at a time you can see the input signal turning the gears just a few teeth at a time. This gave very fine control over the regulator and the steam and speed of the engine. Here are a few clips of the engine running in various states of finish. When it was um, with the uh, A3 tender and without its body shell, everything seemed to perform ok and um, didn't seem to be any problems at all. But with the brass body in place, a fault showed up. This was that the solid state electronics in its present position overheated and all control of the loco was lost. This is the electronics in the position where it overheated on top of the motor unit. So a new printed ball was made, a little smaller and narrower and fitted under the cab floor and this proved to be a success as this was a much cooler location for the electronics. They are finished in, in the blue livery with the red and black lining out and steam pressure up we're off for a few runs. Now with the GER coaches behind the engine, 
The train ran beautifully. It had been running for some time and it was thought perhaps the water was getting low so a stop to refill the tender was made and just like the Hornby ones remove the screw and then inject the uh, distilled water into the tender tank. The oiling of this engine is quite simple. Just open the smoke box door to reveal the valve in the oil tank and insert the uh, needle of the syringe into this valve and inject the quantity of oil into the oil tank. Close the door and ready to go. In this view you can see the engine and the Hornby controller and my finger operating the regulator as the engine moves off. Okay. My flickering fire is uh, the uh, visual indication as to where the regulator is. When it's dim, then it's shut, and when the light gets brighter, it's opening the throttle. Yeah. This is some video I took on a full size loco when you're in the cab yeah. with uh, the fire doors open <laughs> on a dark night. Wow! So you got, there's, a, there's a water there, see the water bobbing up in the glass? Yeah. There's only half full at the moment, and that's the pressure gauge, so it's almost on full pressure. Oh, right. Yeah. So. What's it run at then? 150, is that? Uh, oh, it's over. 185, then. I think, it's from the setup. Blimey. Uh, so that's on, it's on 170 now, and 175 now. So the, the red line is what he's, um, he'll blow off at. Blow off oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So my job is to try and keep that, that needle as close to there as possible yeah. all the time. For, um, but, but, but as soon as I go over that, it, it, the safety valve is lifting, it's, it's a waste, so uh -huh. try not to. Uh, yes. So, so then you can put cold water in the boiler. <laughs> so what happens then? Does that cool things now? Yeah, or you, you, do it with well, a you can steam steam, so you push the water into the boiler. So you, oh, through the injector. And then, of course, you put cold water in there anyway, so it reduces the temperature and then therefore the steam pressure. Yeah. So, so yeah, you put cold water in. Oh, so when, you, when you're running hard up the hill, I need to be creating enough steam to run the locomotive, the, the driver, yeah, yeah. plus to put water in the boiler too. Yeah. And tonight I'm running, with, running, I'm heating up the Levin coaches as well, so I've got steam heat as well. Oh, of course. So yeah, there's lots of coaches on. We've got Levin on tonight. There? That's why we're double heading. Yeah. Ah. Is it up to the hill or down? It's two hills, so we go. We're